Thursday's market closes higher in corn and soybeans, but lower in the rest of the complex. Tommy Gersafi, Advanced Trading, is joining us. And Tommy, I want to start off in the wheat market where we had a tough down day, 30 to 40 cent losses, 10 month lows. Is that market done going down yet? Ooh, one would hope. I, I bet you there's still some people spec long in wheat. Although the funds are a net short in May of the wheat contracts, there's people who, when when they think there's news out there, not that the Ukraine war is new news, it's actually old news at this point. So, you know, I guess the question I have to ask myself, were we ever running out of wheat? What happened in wheat when India said they're not selling? I can tell you some factual things that happened the last few days. These boats that have left Ukraine with grain are continuing to leave Ukraine with grain, and they're being delivered to their destinations. I'm not so sure of the quality of that grain or what state it's in, but also Russia lowering tariffs the last few weeks on wheat, announcing they have a big wheat crop and you know they need money like everyone else during a war, and and they're Russian wheat really trading at a discount. Now we we still have this horrible weather that we had in uh, France and Europe and whatnot. So keep an eye on that Matif wheat contract. I know we're talking about a lot of different wheats here in America. We have Border Trade, KC, Minneapolis, but some professional traders obviously out of Europe watch Matif. Watch out, see if Egypt does a tender here in the next 48 hours. Yeah, and the dollar was up big today, so I'm sure that didn't help the wheat market yet. We were able to see corn and soybeans recover nicely. We had strong new crop weekly exports. Was that it or was there a change in the weather? I, I did see a weather report that mentioned the word frost in the first few weeks of September, and that's enough to scare uh, the shorts out of their positions. Obviously, the SEP meal and the SEP soybeans have been trading at a premium. Uh, we are getting down to the bottom, bottom of the bins. If people have grain left, they're, they have a few weeks to sell it, maybe as old crop. Otherwise, all that crop's going to become new crop. So is it possible? I remember several years ago, November soybeans were trading 10 bucks and Claypool, Indiana, went $5 over the board, only for like 10 hours. But we can see that type of cash market as we come into one crop year into the other. The bins are empty. If you have some, might be a good time to get rid of the rest. Yeah, certainly something to watch right before harvest here. You know, this market is still trying to determine how big this crop size is. And what are your thoughts here, especially since we've had a little change in the weather forecast, but we have seen crop ratings continue to drop here. So is this, this crop getting smaller? Trading crop ratings this time of year is very difficult. It, uh, I, several times in my career, I've read the crop ratings and, and become bullish. It, by this time of year, we're going to figure out if we have a corn crop or not. Now, how it finishes will be very, very important. Is this corn crop going to finish strong? Are we going to get nice, cool weather in the end of August, September? A couple more rains, add a little test weight. Some areas, like I'm in Bloomington, Illinois today, at corporate headquarters, the grass is dry. It looks dry out, and that is not perfect condition to finish corn crop. Crop tour will be swinging by here next week. They'll actually be staying a block away at the hotel in Bloomington. I'll be real interested to see what crop scouts on the tour have to say about this uh, this area I'm in today. The other headline we've been trading is these concerns about China backing off of U.S. purchases or retaliating against the U.S. for our negotiations with Taiwan. Is that something that you're concerned about, or will the market see China back off? I'm terribly concerned about it, and I've talked to clients about being a little bit more hedged in uh, November 23 beans. But to go through the, throw a put option out a year in those beans is going to be a little expensive. It's going to be really expensive. And so what do you do? Like, how, how do you plan for an event that may happen? Yeah. And it could become uh, very expensive if it did happen. Like if, if China truly invaded Taiwan and we quit trading with China, uh, that would be a very awkward situation for many people, not just grain traders, but all types of traders around the world. Let's hope it doesn't happen, but we have to know in the back of our mind it could happen. We're, we've experienced a pandemic. We've experienced a war now, an invasion from Russia. Throw China, Taiwan in there, and you just have a perfect mix for volatility, Michelle. Right, and China was a big purchaser of soybeans in the weekly report today. They were big, number one buyer for beef, so they haven't really pulled back there, but yet the cattle market was lower today and we even had higher cash trade. So what gives there? Well, the cattle market's got a story. I mean, I had some guys hedge up some Jan uh, feeders today. I think maybe we sold 191s, 192s. And those are high numbers. We're almost talking about 
two hundred dollar feeders. And when you look at you know the the story in the cattle is simple enough that last year Canada and North Dakota had a drought that decimated them. A lot of lot of a lot of animals had to be sold or taken off the ranches. Now it's switched. Like you flip the map upside down. Now you're having incredible weakness. You've had incredible drought in the Southwest. So last year it was the Northern states. This year it's the Southern states and Western. You combine those two, there's just not as many physical animals and the cost to stay in the cattle game is going to continue to get more expensive. You know, we're talking five, 85 D 23 corn. That's not exactly cheap. So we know that, Put that expensive meal and corn in those cattle it's going to cost right. some money michelle so maybe a little hedge pressure is what you're saying absolutely okay absolutely what about the hog market uh limit down in that october contract and again we went up to contract highs last week is this just profit taking or what well this is a big move i mean if you look at the daily chart we, we have taken off some numbers it was uncomfortable to see hogs close limit down lock limit down it wasn't a big pool We'll see where they, I would hope they rebound tomorrow. Uh, you might see some margin call pressure. Michelle, sometimes people get involved in futures and options and they don't realize, hey, we're trending up. I bought one, it's going my way. And all of a sudden sure. it's four or $5 against them. And sometimes people aren't trading ones or trading tens and a hundred. And you had some zeros, those numbers, incredible amount of pain to whoever has this trade on the wrong side. Exports were a little down, but you know we can't live and die by every week's, week's exports. Big picture, the world should need our beef, it should need our pork, and the hog market, much like the wheat market, is getting into that oversold territory. Yep. Very good analysis there. Thanks for joining us, Tommy Grisafi with you. Advanced Trading.